Hello and welcome to another episode of Dad vs. Daughter. I'm Tim the Dad, and today I'm going to be taking a look at an expansion to one of my favorite games of all time, which is Eldritch Horror. And that expansion is Cities in Ruin. So you can tell this is a small box expansion, but it actually has a very big impact on the game. So let's get this to the table and see what it adds. <laughs> First off, let's talk about what you do get inside of the box. And if you look on the back of the box here, it will show you your game contents. So let's just kind of see what we've got spread out here on the table. So as always, you are going to get a rule sheet. You're also gonna get uh, four new investigators and their corresponding tokens. So we've got Bob Jenkins, he's the salesman. He kind of looks like a salesman. Rita Young, the athlete. Roland Banks, the Fed, and Ashcan Pete, the Drifter. The ancient one that we are going to get in this expansion is Shud Mel, and I'm probably butchering the pronunciation of that, uh, but you can see he kind of looks like a big space octopus. And you briefly see the back of his card there. We also get some new epic monsters. We actually have several of these ancient uh, Chthonians. So we got four of those. The World Render, which kind of looks like the art cover or the cover art on the box. And then we have Shud Mael. In addition to that, we also have a couple of normal monsters. We always have a cultist, it seems like. And we have a Chthonian. We may actually have some others. Uh, this is my one complaint about the expansions. They put that marking for the expansions on almost everything, but they don't put them on the back of the monsters. So when you add these to your monster cup, they're probably gonna be in there um, for the rest of the time, just because you don't know how to separate those out, unless you have a detailed list of all the monsters that come with each of the expansions. So with our new ancient baddie, we're gonna get six of the mystery cards that we have to use in order to try to defeat him. We are going to get uh, the special encounter cards, and we are going to get a whole stack of the research cards. We're also going to get four new prelude cards. And then, of course, we're going to get new cards for the other encounters. So we've kind of got our generic ones with the black background. We've got uh, our purple area, our orange, our green are basically the other world cards or the gate cards and we have actually some new uh, expedition cards and these are actually for the cities so you can see we have um, I believe that's, oh, that's shanghai there we've got london we've got san francisco so we've got two of each of those we have two new decks we have a disaster deck and these are going to happen uh certain things are going to cause us to read these um, basically this deck has kind of some generic bad stuff that's going to happen. Um, you can see otherworldly rifts, polar vortex, meteor showers, frozen rails, destructive cyclone, upheaval, water spouts. And then we have one for each of the major cities that we have out on uh, the board. And when these come out, then those cities are actually going to become devastated. Uh, you'll have your flavor text, you'll have the bad stuff that's going to happen. And then at the bottom, it'll have the name of that major city. And it'll say like this, Rome is devastated. Uh, Buenos Aires, Shanghai, Tokyo, Arkham, London, San Francisco, Istanbul, Sydney. So when uh, all nine of the major cities have been devastated, that's a new way that we can lose. Now, some of the mystery cards may have us have to go to where those devastated cities are at, and that's where these tokens come in. So let's just say that uh, Buenos Aires was devastated. We take that disaster, or that devastation token, and we place it there. Now when we go there, uh, instead of having a city encounter, we can have a devastation encounter, and that's where this deck comes in. So you can see we've got um, our test, our pass ability, or our pass section, and our fail section. You can see we have a lot of those. Uh, so those are going to happen anytime that you go 
to where a devastated city is at because once it is devastated, it is no longer treated as a city. Of course, we also have a whole bunch of new Mythos cards. You can see we've got a series of green cards there. We've got yellow. And then we only have a few blue. We have three blue. So we have four new Relic cards. You can see, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce these. Uh, fetch stick, I know that one. Um, but you can see we have those assets. So you can see those. Some of these are really cool. You get the Winchester rifle, uh, the private flight I really kind of like. Um, Painkillers. Gatlin gun. So those are really neat. I like those. Um, of course, we have some new conditions. We have ones, you know, that we have uh, in the base game and all the other expansions. You know, you've got your blessed, your cursed, your dark pack, your debt. Uh, then you got, you know, some other conditions. You got talent, so you're attuned. Or you have madness, terror. Uh, another talent is guts, uh, practiced, quick study, relentless, rugged. So you can see we have a bunch of those. We have a few new spells. So we have Beast Within. You can see we have several copies of that. Occult Exaltation and Spectre Razor. And then finally, we have a stack of unique assets. So you can see they are the same front and back. But uh, we have a lot of these. Duke, I have that uh, when I was playing as Ashcan Pete. Uh, he's the ally. So you can see some really cool looking things here. And I really am digging the art. Uh, of course, I always really like the art in this game, but uh, you can see that uh, it's got really good art, I think. You're also going to get new Eldritch tokens. Uh, you're going to get some new uh, health and sanity tokens as well, uh, and the bases for the characters. So that's all of the new stuff that you get in this small box expansion. So now let's get to what I think. So the disasters and the devastation are really what is the crux of this expansion. And I like it. Uh, I like it a lot. I like the fact that uh, when these disasters come out, uh, if it does hit a city, you put that uh, devastation token on there and they are no longer uh, cities. So a lot of the stuff that you do normally in a city, you're not going to be doing there and you're going to be resolving these um devastation encounters, which I think is really cool. Um, it just kind of adds uh, that different type of element to the gameplay. It also can speed up the game, I think. Uh, now, the game I played of this the other night, uh, we hit the three-hour mark, and we were nowhere near winning. In fact, um, we were just getting killed, uh, literally. Um, we had each lost all of our original investigators, and then uh, we had a Mythos card that came up. And based on the number of monsters we had on the board, collectively all of us investigators had to lose sanity equal to that amount, which caused all of us to go insane. And we would have had to all get uh, new investigators. So at that point, we just kind of said, you know what? Uh, we're not going to be able to save the world. So sorry. But uh, where would I rank this in comparison to the other expansions? Well, I own all of the other expansions, but I've not played all of them. I've played most. In fact, the I think the only ones that I haven't played are uh, Masks, and I have not played uh, Dreamlands. But I think I've played all of the rest of the expansions. This one is up there. Uh, like I said, I really like this disaster and devastation uh, aspect that this expansion brings. Um, it doesn't bring a new sideboard, which, you know, is something that I like, um, especially like Under the Pyramids. I think that's one of my favorite uh, expansions and probably my favorite big box expansion, uh, just because I like the theme, you know, with the pyramids and you've got a, um, a mummy with that. Uh, but I don't want to spoil that too much. I like the fact that, you know, you're always getting new encounter cards. So uh, the way I like to play the game is... If I'm going to sit down and play with an expansion, then I like to really just kind of use what that expansion brings. So 
while I may have the base investigators that I use, I also like to only use uh, these uh, new ones if possible because that kind of gives you, you know, that unique flair um, or flavor. Now, not to say that you, you know, can't mix these in when you're playing with other things because I will eventually be doing that. Uh, I keep all of my investigators together and usually uh, what will happen is whenever, uh, regardless of what I pull out, We've always got the stack, so, uh, you know, you get to pick uh, which investigators you want. But um, as far as all of the other cards, all the different encounter cards and um, the other cards that we have down here, I keep those separate, uh, like I said, because I like to have that specific flavor when I'm playing with that expansion. And I don't want to put those in if I'm playing, like I said, with Under the Pyramids or something else. I want to use that expansion's cards. So that's just my personal preference. I know a lot of people will take everything and they'll just mix it all together. To me, that's too much. Um, like I said, I like that specific flavor that that specific expansion adds to the game because this is a big story that we're all part of and we're telling. Gameplay wise, everything else is really the same. I do like the inclusion of having these new um, expedition locations that are now going into the uh, various cities, um, and maybe some of the other expansions have the other cities that are not um, represented here. Because so we have um, Shanghai, so we have one of the purple region. We have London, which is the orange region, and then we have San Francisco, which is in the green region. So you have two from each one of those, and maybe the other expansions uh, will have you know one from. Um, each of the different areas as well. And those I could actually see adding into um, everything else. This one, I really have enjoyed playing it. Uh, I would highly uh, encourage people that if they love this game, probably to go out and get all the expansions anyway. Uh, but this would be one of probably the first ones that I would say go and get. Probably um, Forsaken Lore is probably the first First small box expansion I would suggest getting just because it kind of adds a little bit more to the base. And I always encourage people, hey, start with the base, play that several times, and then start mixing in the expansions. Uh, but this would be one that I would definitely recommend uh, mixing in early um, with your collection. So that is the Cities in Ruin expansion. This looks like that. I think it's a Flonase commercial Um the like a big flower coming out, but uh, kind of really cool artwork there. So we will catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching our video. We hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, click that like and subscribe button. You can also follow us on social media like Facebook and Twitter at Dad and Daughter. And if you like what we do and you want to support us, you can visit our Patreon page. So thanks for watching. Thanks.